I'm here in my capacity as the director of the newly formed Sp Center for Spatial Research. So some people in the audience might know us still as the Spatial Information Design Lab. Um, so we're based in an architecture school, and so design is our mode of research. Trained in design, our work in visualization complements methods from other fields in visual ways. Because of this, um, we take on work that demands collaboration. And we like to demonstrate to many fields that what they, what they really are doing is design. And that's really an important, it's an important component of our pedagogical work. OK, there we go. So we're currently collaborating with individuals and research groups from fields of neuroscience, journalism, computer science, geography, humanities, political science, and library sciences, uh, many of whom are in this room today. And um, you can raise your hands if you collaborate with me, <laughs> um, with us. So rather than showing one project, I'd like to talk about um, five ideas which represent our methods and approach to data visualization across um, a number of projects. So we work under um, the umbrella that throughout history, new ways of seeing um, have produced new ways of knowing. And um, here are the members of my incredible team, so Girga, Basic, Juan Saldariaga, Dar Broly, and I think Johan is somewhere, somewhere. Johan Hartman is somewhere um, in the audience. So um, neuroscience um, is a perfect version of this phenomenon that I'm, that I'm trying to talk about, and, and it's really an umbrella for all our work. New ways of seeing produce new ways of knowing, um, and I think all of us uh, from multiple disciplines will understand that in different ways. Um, so. so this over here um, is known as a connectome model of the brain. So to create this, we worked with a series of MRIs taken by Daphna Shahami's lab. And we worked with Johan Weber, um, who produced, who made an interface called NeuroElf. And with two architectural graduate students, we took the data from MATLAB to create a 3D model which then can be rotated in, in space and can explain um, Sebastian Sung's groundbreaking model of the connectome, which redefined the human brain as a network model of connect connectomes along axons rather than the way the, the brain was known before as a functional spatial model of the brain with various reason reasons. Um, we've also been working with Randy Bruno's lab um, also taking section cuts through, and in this case, um, individual neurons to create um, a three-dimensional model of a neuron, which we've even printed. We can rotate it in space just like that axon. Um, and we're also working with Elizabeth Hillman, who is going to be presenting a little bit later today about her, uh, the blood model of the brain. All of this in association with the Mind Brain Behavior Institute, which has a new building on the Manhattanville camp campus. So the next scale, or the next mode of, uh, of visualization is observation at different scales. And it's often um, important to be able to visualize a single item within a larger system. And that, create that um, ability to zoom in and out from the detail to the whole system is something that we focus on a lot in our work. Um, so in this project over here, we visualized and displayed um, posts from Weibo that had been deleted by sensors, both to show what they say and to underscore the system of censorship and the ways in which activists have overcome that censorship. Another project. Um, called Port to Port, visualizes global energy trade by both conveying the magnitude of patterns and the scales of it, but also centering on geographically specific ports to tell stories which illustrate the different and divergent aspects um, of this kind of trade. The third point, uh, visualizing intellectual fields through metadata. Oops, Oops sorry. <laughs> um, uh, this is uh, a project that actually uh, we've been doing as part of a MAGIC grant from this incredible Brown Institute over here. 
um, and it is called Science Surveyor, and, it, and it's a tool that effectively characterizes and visualizes trends in scientific literature and establishes whether a new finding is an outlier or part of a field of consensus. It does this through intuitive, clear, interactive graphics that prompt better questions and also challenge conve conventional methods of, uh, of visualizing workshops. This is a project that's very much work in progress and we're also collaborating with computer scientists at Stanford on, on this project. So the fourth point is called visualizing the invisible. It's the work that our former lab is most well known for. for. Um, and the project that exemplifies this is the Million Dollar Brox project. Rather than mapping crime, we mapped incarceration to show the disproportionate effects of incarceration on poor neighborhoods of color uh, across the United States. Um, then also uh, by mapping Foursquare location by comments, we showed the emotions of the users in the comments and in our live, uh, the emotions, um, you, you they're actually very funny comments over here if you look very closely. Uh, Juan worked on this project along with Sarah Williams. Um, then uh, the library project where we collaborated with the Columbia Library to visualize um, their collections. Um, rather than showing single books, we tried to show the relationships between books which were classified uh, by multiple disciplines and you could click on the multiple disciplines and, and then the book, uh, the range of books shows up in the catalog. Um, the last category is called um, inadvertent memory. So, of course, uh, you know, data is often otherwise simply called memory. Um, and we like to work with projects that show that although data is collected for one reason, it often exposes um, something else that's inadvertent. So, uh, the big project, uh, umbrella project that we're working on, um, which exemplifies this, is called conflict urbanism. And I want to focus today on some brand new maps that Juan has just um, produced about Colombia, the country. And by spatially analyzing and visualizing data about the victims of the conflict, which wasn't collected for this purpose, we are helping build the historical memory of the country and in so doing, contributing to the, ongo the ongoing peace building process. We are primarily using data from the Registro Unico de Victimas for this project. So if you can see the white dot is where a person has moved from and the, and the line gradually changes to orange to where somebody migrated to. So in these uh, maps, the lines connect cities where people were displaced to the cities where they moved to. One can often connect large displacements with specific historic events such as significant massacres. So. Um, this particular map shows migration of 10,000 people, um, for example, over the 30-year period of the war. Um, and you can see towns such as Bojaya in 2002, where a massacre called, caused nearly an entire town to relocate. And we're only at the very um, beginning of this project through which a number of um, stories are going to unfold. So those are my five points. <laughs> I look forward to comments later. Thanks.